So what we're working on today, uh, we're gonna replace the fuel pump. I got one issue when I picked up the new fuel pump for the old diesel. I got two different plungers here. And I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but if you look at the side profiles, this is kind of a smooth one and I got a hole like here. So what I'm gonna try and do is knock this pin out of here and then switch our arms over. Um, this would be an easy job back at the shop, but this is gonna be on the boat kind of swap them so we'll see how that goes so i'm just going to try to knock this drift this pin out and then i'll switch these arms over all right so that one's out See if it's on our own plane. I should turn. All right, you can see here, so there's a little spring in here. If you do try to do something like this, make sure that you don't let the spring hop out. Now, and again, I only think this will work, I don't know. Um, so we drifted that pin out. You can see this is, again, just kind of a hinged guy. Went something like that. Anyways, so the hookups are the same. Everything else looks the same. It's just how the plunger's pressed when it rides on the camshaft. So, in theory, should be able to hook onto this little pump right here. So if you're noticing I use the claw side and laughing. Uh, the one thing you gotta be careful about is one sloppy hit and smack in that seal surface. I mean, these, these pumps are pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, so you don't gotta be super gentle with them, honestly, but that's the one if you smack this little aluminum surface and dinger it up, it won't seal and you'll be leaking all over the place. So it's just using the claw side to kind of get in there. Looks just starting to go. And that's that. So, yeah, I just took the old body. And again, before I did that, I mean, I just very, I, I don't know if this will work for sure, but uh, the base, everything looks the same. So, what I'm guessing is they made so many variations of these Lehmans um, that this might be, um, they just handed me one for a Lehman. Um, so I'm guessing maybe there's one variation this might be different in some way, but anyways, it's just an arm that rides on the cam if you're not familiar, and the cam lobe hits it and pumps it back and forth, that's what that sound is. Um, so as far as this, it's not super technical, it just needs a cam to smack this, but when I tried to insert this one in it, I mean, you can see here, this was riding on the cam lobe for the delivery valves that were actually for the plungers, so it wouldn't even go in, so we'll see, hopefully this works. Um, kind of a Hail Mary. I just bought this pump today for 120 bucks. So hopefully it works. Um, don't care to take apart brand new parts, but with how limited finding parts for these diesels are, we'll give it a shot. So. Hi. Um, so I'm going to be painting cabinets today because they are gross looking on the inside. I tried scrubbing them and it's just not coming off, so I'm just going to paint over it.
I will show you guys what the finished product looks like, but it's already looking so much cleaner. Okay, so I finished all of the cabinets. I'm going to show you what they look like. What is it? the little girl to close this on me. So I got the fuel pump installed after I swatted out the plunger arm. Um, it still wasn't working when I went to crank it over. Uh, it wasn't getting any pressure out of here. So I ended up doing, as you can see here, that this top is actually a perfect circle. Um, one line has a one-way valve and one has another one-way valve. So when the plunger goes, it pulls and pushes. So this was actually 180 and that isn't a part I took apart. Uh, so again, like I was talking about earlier, these Lehman's come in a bunch of different variations. Um, this pump is actually mounted reversed when it's not on a coupler. And so I think maybe this was for one of those. So switched out the plunger arm and then I took this in 180 because then this is supposed to be the line going to the engine and pushing fuel. This was actually pulling. So I flipped it around and now we're getting fuel up. So one issue we found was I was getting that hard start I mentioned. Now I got good fuel pressure. This bleeder nut on this fuel filter here um, is completely stripped out. So I went to bleed the lines and then when I tightened it, it just kept spinning basically. So someone blew the threads out before. So that might be my culprit for my hard start, just sucking in the air there. <clears throat> but what we're gonna work on today is, I mentioned, I think earlier when I first started that it might be might go through and just have the injectors rebuilt because it started hard i thought it was because it was sitting well now that we've been running a few times it starts pretty hard every time so hopefully on top of error we're just going to go ahead and pull the injectors today send them out get them rebuilt just for good measure so i'm just going to kind of do a quick run through of yanking those out and we'll take a look and see how it looks all right so i already took the bolts of the valve cover off just because it's kind of a tedious little task So the injectors are sitting in here and then so we're going to take the lines off take the injectors and then this is the overflow tube the return line that goes back so we're going to knock these off and get these injectors out
shove some paper towels in here. Everything on the top of a head is usually pretty sealed besides where the push rods go through. And if you know me, if I can drop something through a crack that's just as big as a bolt, I'll do it. It's not an engine, but just anywhere on a boat. So we'll just chuck these in here just in case something goes astray, we can catch it. Because I got no plan on chasing nothing today. And while we're in here, um, I'm also going to take this time, I'll adjust the valves after we get the injectors all done, but we'll do that later. So. Oh, there we go. Hello, Russ. Swap all these ejectors for me? Yeah. No. Why not? You do this, I can go watch TV. Yeah. You want to just work on the engine so Daddy can sit down? Yeah. No. No? <laughs> that seems alright. Okay. Well, you go watch your cartoons and I'll, I'll work on the engine, okay? Good deal. I'm gonna get the short end of that deal. <laughs> Tell us what she wants, but she she knows and she doesn't want to jump in and work. Smart girl. So this guy. Say so we got no washers on there. It's good. Everything looks pretty good there. A little trick I'll do if I get stuff in a tight place like this. It's just as you're, you know, you get those spots sometimes where you're just finger threading bolts out. And you can, can't really get a good hold on it when I'm unscrewing it. You can feel when it gets close. I'll just hang the magnet around so that, I mean, if you can unscrew it, pull it out with your fingers, do that. But what I'll usually do is get it just where it starts getting loose and then just kind of toss it to the magnet and let it do the work. So you can see the injectors are all out now. I just got to open holes. I'll need to plug it up here in a second. Um, so we're gonna send those off to the shop, get them redone, and then I'll show you the start of my issues. So we've got these two nuts here on the bottom of the, or bolts, sorry, on top of the fuel filter that these are uh, bleeders. So if anyone's dealt with a mechanical injected diesel, um, once air gets in here, you have to bleed it all the way out to, to get it to fire off again and run. Um, they can be kind of a bear. Once once they're going, as long as air doesn't introduce in the system, they'll pretty much run indefinitely. So well, this is one of the bleeders that when I went to tighten, you can see. Uh, I need to tell you something. It just, just spins. So that's totally sucking in air. Another red flag is the fact that this bolt is different than this. This is a 3 8 or 10. This one's an 11. So someone probably tried to shove a quarter 20 bolt. It looks cut off too. Um, I mean, if you chase the threads and do it, maybe. But I think someone just ripped it out and tried to squeeze something in. It's not going to work for your type situation. It might hold the bracket down or whatever in aluminum. So long story short. Um, I'm going to pull this filter off and 
replace this top piece that this stripped out in. Um, and then I'm just gonna pull these lines off too and check them out, uh, make sure we got, I mean, um, they can split here at the fittings and stuff. Um, so even though they're hard lines, they still can have issues and stuff. So I'm gonna pull them all apart, take this opportunity, pull them all apart, um, and just get in there and make sure we're starting with a good fuel system. Because again, this, this motor has 1200 hours on it and once it's running, it's good, but it's starting so hard that I think it's chasing air. Um, and once this thing's in the water, um, that's when that's when it's gonna leave us stranded. So I'm gonna end up taking all this part. This all started with just a fuel pump. Um, but now that we got a good fuel pump on it, I'm gonna go through and, and basically chase all my sources. Um, we've got good diesel on this thing also, and we got it had a lot of water in it. Um, and my concern is that someone was running it for a while without checking your tank. So moral of that story, even if your rig is running fine in a boat, um, check your tanks for water. Uh, this one, the pickups an inch or two off the bottom of the tank. I actually took the top off of it and shoved a pump, a hand pump with some clear tube all the way to the bottom and pumped everything from the bottom and you, there was literally inches of water. Now, most people don't look for water that hard until it's in the system. But by then you got a couple inches of the bottom and it's just solid water. So as soon as you start rocking and swashing, you know, on a boat, uh, that that gets kind of kicked up and mixed up. So if you want to, word, word of the wise, if you want to avoid that, check your tanks once in a while. You know, put some down the filler, put a hose down it, and just suck the bottom out. Um, I'll use a clear hose, pump the water out until you, you know, if you're using red dye off road, which I think most people are, um, pump it out until you see that red dye. Um, and again, it'll just say, I think the previous owners were running this one with the water, which is causing some issues and someone's definitely fin or moving around in here and stuff. I think chasing a problem. So anyways, long story short, I'm going to go through, check all our lines, start with a good line, good lines, pump seems good. Now everything else, hopefully get the injector sent off. And after that, we should have a tight sealed system with good flowing injectors. And hopefully you guys don't see me go back in here anytime soon. Ends off. I'm gonna take them home, get them cleaned up, um, make sure they're not leaking. Uh, this is the housing I was just talking about with the leaky bolt. So I'm gonna again get this pulled off. Another thing I'm gonna do while I'm here is my raw water pump is right here under this filter. Now we fired this thing up four or five times now and everything seemed to be dry for the most part. I mean, I probably missed it, but um, everything seemed pretty good. Um, and then this last time I was messing with it, I got a weep coming from the seals inside the raw water here, it looks like. So, um, for example, why I like to, to fire things up quite a few times, we wanna get this thing really brought up to temp and, and don't just pop it off and, and check for stuff, you know, bring it up to temp, let it run. And because when we first fired this, it ran pretty good. And now we're working out some bugs. So um, anyways, it's not a big deal to rebuild that and put new seals in it. Um, but if this is a great time to do it, as you can see, I think you can see from the angle, I've got everything torn apart to where I can just pop this off. Now, if that's something where I was to, to save for later, because it's just a drip at this point. If I was to save it for later, put everything back on, it's going to be a lot harder to get it out. So um, I'm definitely a big believer. And while you're in here, just do what you can. And then it won't cause you heartache later. So, a um, little backstory when we bought this boat, the bilge is pretty nasty, and I've pumped some of it out, um, but it's basically full of oil and just nastiness. Uh, so the second one I was talking about, don't drop anything, and I usually don't, um, by the powers of everything, that is, uh, I dropped my screwdriver. So, i <laughs> show you what you don't want to do. I got, so, show you the, show you the consequences of dropping it. So now you're thinking, clean your bilge. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, 
basically after this project is when I decided after I'm done making diesel and smelling and getting the motor happy, then I'm gonna pump that out, get it in there and clean it all out. But in the meantime, if you got a bilge that looks like mine, don't drop stuff in because that's what you get. All right, so I got the raw water pump off. I moved over here because my knees just about had it over there. So um, I already took the six screws off the main cover. So if you're not familiar with the raw water pump on a boat, it's just as it sounds, um, you basically have a shaft drive, whether it's belt or in this case, ours bolts on the back of the injection pump, sucks in water from under the boat, runs it through a heat exchanger and cools the engine. So um, these have rubber impellers in it, which are just a wear and tear item to say the least. So if, if, again, if you're not familiar with it, um, rubber impeller and a pump sucks salt water through. So you can see it's, it's a maintenance item. I mean, if you get a boat, you're gonna be messing with one, honestly. Um, if you are familiar, then, then you know already. So took the six bolts out of this cover. And this is our rubber impeller here. Okay, and then you can see this cover's definitely got some wear in it. You know, you can got quite a lip there, so we'll replace that. Um, again, we just bought this boat not long ago. It, uh, so I'm just gonna replace the rubber impeller anyways. So you're just gonna pull this guy out. It's a cheap bit of insurance, honestly, just to replace it now. Have to get a little rough it. So luckily this actually looks good. It was probably replaced recently, but I'd rather get in here and just replace it and know that it's good. Um, because if you start ripping these impellers off, um, it's gonna go down to your heat exchanger and then you're gonna have to fish them all out and stuff, which isn't fun. So um, for me, they're not very expensive. I think anytime you're in this general area, I'm just gonna replace it. It's better to, to be a little premature and, and replacing it early than it is to have it burn up and have someone that's not watching your heat gauge because as soon as that burns up your heat will spike so anyhow so right here when this thing was running we're getting a weep from this center section as you can tell this is a sealed surface but then you've got a shaft seal in here everything looks a lot better than what i expected to be honest but uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and um i'm gonna take this home i I still have the shop until we move on the boat. So anything like this, I can do on a workbench at home, I'm going to. So I'm gonna wrap this guy up and put it in the truck and then I'll uh, I'll re probably rebuild that and then I'll show you the finished product. All right, so this, is a, this uh, video went to extra innings, but um, we're gonna end up doing a part two to this video as I gotta send the injectors out to be rebuilt. Um, obviously I gotta order quite a few parts as I showed. Um, I kind of did this on a whim, so I actually didn't have any parts ready to go back on the engine. So after parts come in, we get the injectors rebuilt, I'll end up doing a second part two video of this. Anyone wants to follow along and see how to install the parts that I removed, and then we'll do another fire off and see how that goes. No, no.